Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Anxiety Slayer podcast. This week, Ananga and I are sharing what helps when you feel overwhelmed by anxiety. Hey, Ananga, how you doing? Hey, Shen. So good to be with you again this week to talk about how we can care for ourselves when we're overwhelmed by anxiety. And several years back, you had a second arrow teaching that you shared with me, and maybe we covered it a little bit along the way, but I thought that would be a good place for us to start. What is the second arrow teaching and how that can hold us hostage to our looping anxious thoughts? Yeah, it's something that really helped me when I first learned it and it served me very well over the years. It comes from Buddhist psychology. And the teaching is that we have the two arrows. The first arrow is, is the fact of the situation. So something hits us and it is what it is. And the second arrow is what our mind brings in response to it or in reaction to it, how we can worry over our worry, how we become emotionally involved in the first arrow. We worry how much it's going to hurt. We worry how long it's going to be there. So in the case of anxiety, it's the fear of the fear and all those thoughts that go with anxiety. Am I going crazy? Will I always feel like this? No, nothing's working for this. Am I going to be stuck like this forever? The thoughts we have about anxiety and the overwhelm of anxiety where we just feel that I can't cope. This is just too much. My mind feels so overloaded. It's ruining my life. It's taking over everything. The thoughts are different for us each because we're all different. But that's the nature of the second arrow. It's the thoughts and feelings we have in response to the facts of a difficult experience, a difficult event. It just makes me think about how often we can get stuck in that loop of worry. Everyone does it in one way or another at some point or another. And I remember having a friend tell me that, hey, this is going on right now, but it's not going to last forever. Mm -hmm. And that was a fact. But our mind would make us think that we're stuck this way. That's it. This is the way it is forever and ever and ever. And I was so grateful for that. One of those off the cuff comments is yeah, today is a pain in the ass, but it's not always going to be this way. No. And also, when we're looking at the first arrow, we start thinking about what help do I need with it? Can I pull it out? Mm -hmm. What does it need? What first aid does it need? How can I respond to it? to deal with the facts of the first thing, the facts of the first arrow, the facts of the real thing. But our mind does tend to go to this reaction, this emotional reaction. Most of us tend to do that. And the more stressed we are, the less resourceful we are, the more anxious we are, the more we're so exhausted in dealing with anxiety, that, that is where we tend to go. But it's its own awful suffering. Yeah. So I think... It's good to explore the teaching and then to keep it in mind so we can look at our mind and say, okay, what am I chewing over? What is my mind bringing up? Very often when anxiety goes into the mind, it then goes straight into the body and we're so caught in that that we don't have that gap to think, what's happening? and What do I need? How can I respond to this? So that really is the, the key point for me from that teaching is to find that point of response to be kind and to understand that the mind tends to do this, but it's not telling you the truth and it can be helped. And one of the ways that you can help yourself is by creating a routine. And we know this because anxiety is provoked by change. It comes up when things are erratic and unstable. When we build stability in our day, we actually feel more grounded and settled. And this can be really simple at the start. How do you start your day from the moment your eyes open? That might be in a space of being really positive about, I look forward to what the day will bring. Or all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. 
some, you know, something that lifts you up before you even get your feet out of bed to taking a look at how you nourish yourself first thing in the day. What does that routine look like? Because often our listeners forget to eat, get in a space of being so hungry that then they're not thinking about what is most supportive for them to eat, but having a routine around eating meals regularly. And at the same time, as much as possible, not skipping meals. We know that there are things you can do in a routine that are going to help you tremendously. We've talked a lot about going to bed and getting up at the same time each day as much as possible. Yeah, it sounds so unsatisfactory sometimes to open there with routine. I wrote an article years ago on my blog called Beautiful Routine (laughs) and uh, (laughs) the things you can do to help yourself. Because it just sounds so unappealing right? to me initially to just say routine. It's like you're suffering so much with anxiety that you might not even feel you can face the day or you might be worried sick about how are you going to get to work or how are you going to hold it together in a meeting or how are you going to get the kids to school without them seeing you fall apart? Right. And then somebody says, you need a routine. It just sounds so out of step with the experience of anxiety. But there's a reason for it, and that is that the energy that Ayurveda, India's ancient science of life, teaches that provokes anxiety is really increased and unsettled by change. And Ayurveda teaches that whenever there's something that's provoked by something, we apply the gentle opposite, and it brings balance and it brings peace. So by going to bed at the same time as much as you can, getting up at the same time as much as you can. Sometimes we need a little flex around it, eating our meals as much as we can at the same time. It brings a stability and a groundedness that does help settle anxiety. It's going to help over time. It's not going to do it in the first day or week. But in my life, I felt it within a couple of weeks. When you have that alternative to feeling erratic and that your nerves just feel jangled and things feel sudden and shocking. This helps stop that. And what you bring into your routine then can have even greater power to calm anxiety. If you're going to bring in something like a guided meditation or a breathing practice or some tapping in the evening or a warm bath with some essential oils and some relaxing music, you've got to tailor it to what works to you and what you feel is going to hold your mind in peace. For example, a warm bath for my body type is really good with some Epsom salts and lavender. If I've had heightened anxiety, I don't want to get in the bath with my head. Right, right. I don't want to be stuck with my head. (laughs) It just feels like being in the room with someone that you don't want to be stuck with. So I would increase the lavender and I would listen to an audio book or read or put some relaxing music on, light a candle. I'd I'd set it up that I could be with my mind and be okay. Yeah. So sometimes we have to tweak things like that. Some people might love breathing practices and think, you know, that really helps me feel calm. Others might think I fixate on my breath too much. That doesn't work for me. Pick something else. Don't let your mind tell you nothing works because that's simply not true. Just find what works for you. And if you can bring some healing pockets into your routine during the day, that's going to really make a difference. So there is a reason why we say routine as ridiculous as it might sound, or as it might sound like sticking a sticking plaster on a great big wound. There's a reason for it in Ayurveda for how it works. And I have seen it and experienced it work many, many times. I have come to be incredibly grateful for my routines. They have been so supportive, whether I'm anxious or not, having a routine where I'm taking much better care of my body or I'm taking much better care of my mind um, because I have the pit of fire moving my body is such a gift. Just like the warm bath is a gift to your body. If I move, if, if I get outside for a morning walk and just take in the beauty all around me, that's a gift. And it does take my head away from 
anxious, looping thoughts, or if I am having a day where I'm particularly overwhelmed, I know that if I move, it'll get me out of my head and it will get me into the day in a positive way. And if I can't walk in the morning, I'll walk in the evening. And if I can't take a long walk, sometimes just a walk to the post office, uh, which is a few blocks from my home, or a walk to the water, which is a few blocks, just a short walk. This routine becomes what you know to be true, what you know to be supportive, and it becomes a, a bit of a safe haven, if that makes sense. Yeah. It does. I think we be, we come to depend on it. And there's a teaching in Qigong, the healing martial art that we often talk about, that if you have a practice that you do at the same time every day and you've been doing it for a while, you've been doing it for two or three months and you skip a day, your body goes into that healing mode at that time of day anyway, mm. because you've set that energy in motion and you've built that intention of practice into your body. So these things they act over time. Anxiety can make us impatient. That's all part of its curse, part of what we have to work with with it. But we owe it to ourselves to really explore what helps and give it a chance. And building these things in walking also works wonders for me. There are times when I know I just have to get out my chair and march outside, whatever the weather, whatever the time of day. Those would be days if I've been a little unwell and I haven't got out for a couple of days because usually I make a point of getting outside. And uh, yeah, walking is incredibly important. Ayurveda teaches that there are different qualities and energies that impact us and impact our mind. And there is a, a lower energy, it's called Tamagun, which we're going to be talking about in our new course, Ayurveda for Anxiety Relief course. And this energy holds us stuck in a low state and it makes it very difficult for us to move. But the remedy for it is to move. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like pinned to your chair or your bed or wherever you are by anxiety, sometimes you feel almost held hostage by it. Best thing you can do is get up and move, march up and down your room, get in a hot shower, get outside, whatever it is to just move and change it up. And you will feel that energy dissolves because the remedy for it is movement. One of the remedies, there are others too. But to get out of that stuck state, yeah, walking and moving, that's the one. Curiosity is also a big part of how we can address overwhelm. We know that people who struggle with anxiety tend to be very creative, very intelligent, highly sensitive beings. And practicing curiosity helps keep our attention where our strengths are instead of using our very active minds <laughs> to churn over anxiety and be in that worry loop about everything and anything that could go wrong. And this curiosity is a practice where we can invite or pull our minds to look at what interests us versus what is terrifying us. And this can involve active reading and studying something new. I, you and I right now are in this big research study mode, and whether it has anything to do with overwhelm. It, it has to do with feeding our minds right now. Mindful walking, we've already talked about that. That can be a curiosity practice in itself. Finding something that interests you and that keeps drawing your mind to a, a new exploration. These are just a, a handful of the areas where curiosity can help because we know that anxiety will constantly try and pull our attention to future fears and what-if thoughts. And we know that it can quickly flood our mind and body with a lot of dread. But if we come back to these suggestions, we can really give ourselves such a gift. How do you practice active reading? I find studying and reading to be real medicine. It has such a good effect on my mind. I like to take notes, so I'll annotate my books. I'm never happier than when I've got a highlighter pencil in my hand. <laughs> As many family members and friends will laugh about tagging up books, sitting with a cup of tea and a pencil, taking notes. The second I put a pencil in my hand, it's got such a positive anchor for me of feeling purposeful and engaged. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, 
I like to read really actively. Sometimes I read out loud. Sometimes I'll rewrite things in my own words. I love to share anything that's helped me, hence my work with you. So that keeps my mind very active, always on the lookout for anything that can help somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that is an invitation to remain in the present moment. The more active you are with your studying, reading, learning, the less you're going to suffer with anxiety because your mind is focused somewhere else. Yeah, my mind needs quite a bit of pinning down if it's anxious. It needs something to grab onto. Hence my example of if I was anxious and I was having a bath, I'd need to be listening to something or reading something so that I'm not just soaking in your own mind. (laughs) (laughs) Soaking in the well of your mind. Yeah. What did we call it the other day? We were laughing at what did we say about playing your own jukebox of horrors. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes we really fear that. That's also a second arrow thing. Oh, don't put me in there right. with that. Don't leave me with my mind. We don't want to be left with our mind. That's why people watch TV. That's why people drink. We don't want to be left with our mind. But the healthy way of dealing with it is to find something that engages it. So if my mind's been really anxious, I might. Um, in the past I used to do a lot of coloring in mm-hmm. and listening through a really heavy medical diagnosis. That got me through so many tests and waiting 10 days, two weeks, three weeks for results. I went through that several times over a period of weeks and months. And the way that I could lock my mind down and be peaceful throughout that was my meditation practice. And listening, listening to interesting classes and coloring in. The thing is, you know how creative the anxious mind is because of what it can conjure up. The detail with which you and the speed with which you can conjure up your worst nightmares, it's really good, very, very creative. Yeah. In in the worst possible way. So if you can bring in some coloring and whatever you like to do, baking, knitting, whatever locks it down into something that's just gonna take it away from chewing over the anxious thoughts. And you've also been, whether you know this or not, a wonderful role model for me and I'm sure for many of our listeners for the way that you find inspiration, seek inspiration, seek out people who have overcome adversity, spend time reading their books, um, the the wonderful friends that you have, the relationship that we have, uh, the way that that you will say, oh, you know, this is a a great podcaster, author, or a, a storytelling that helps us gather hope and find inspiration. So it's incredibly potent and powerful for us to seek out others, to seek out materials, music, courses, whatever it may be, to build that hope. Yeah, and there's so much there now. For me, that was a gift from chronic illness, from being housebound and often bedbound for long periods of time with a very active mind. So I needed to find something that could bring hope and could still bring interest and reading and listening to different people. Also, I feel that when we can learn from people who've gone through heavy adversity, then we respect them and we're going to give their ideas a try. I often talk about Edith Eger, who, if you haven't heard of her, she's an Auschwitz survivor in her 90s, who's an amazing psychologist and author. She wrote a book called The Choice which is quite heavy in places, but she then went on to write a book called The Gift, which I highly recommend, which is her teachings. She's amazing, and I will listen to her because she went through hell. Yeah. And one of her key teachings was that she was curious. Mm. That's one of her key points, is that she remained curious, and that got her through. So again, you know, you can say curiosity when somebody's suffering so awfully with their mind, people might think it's a, it's a lightweight thing to bring up. But that's, for me, when I read Curiosity, I think of her. And she was someone that I sat and listened to so many of her talks with a pen and paper and wrote so many notes. And in some really difficult times in my life, I've gone back to those notes again and again. And she's helped me so much. I think it's really potent to gather inspiration from people that you 
respect. And you can, you can respect them because of their experience. They know what they're talking about. Mm, yeah. So we can trust them. For the last several months, I've been trying to find a way to get my energy steady throughout the day while producing my podcasts, running a coaching business, and doing voice work. And more than one cup of coffee in the morning is just not an option for me. I have a lot on my plate most days, and sometimes the amount of content I'm creating completely zaps my energy. These are the days when I'd rather take a nap than get my work done. Thankfully, I found a little shot of goodness. I recently started drinking these green shots, and I love them. They help me when I get the afternoon energy drain. I usually drink them about an hour after lunch, and I'm happy to report that I no longer want to take an afternoon siesta. After 10 days, I've had far fewer afternoon energy crashes, and I recently learned that this is due to the L-theanine inside the shot. The L-theanine in matcha helps increase focus and attention. Caffeine doesn't actually give you energy. It blocks the adenosine receptors in your brain. These are the neuroreceptors that tell you you're building fatigue. When the receptors unblock, one to three hours later, if you don't have another coffee, you may experience a caffeine crash. And this is what I was experiencing before trying these little shots. L-theanine binds with the caffeine molecules in matcha and prevents the full blocking of receptors reducing or dissolving the caffeine crash and the jitters you can feel. It's nature's time-released caffeine. Seeing how well this little shot has worked for me, I encourage you to try it out as well if you're having trouble maintaining your energy some days. It really does provide a wonderful boost. We have a 20% off code to share with you guys. It's ASLAYER20. To use it, you can go to magicmind.co slash ASLAYER and enter the code ASLAYER20 at checkout. The best part is they have a money-back guarantee, and if you choose to get the subscription, it's 40% off. Our 40% off code only lasts 10 days, so you'll want to jump on this offer today. The next 10 days, you can get 40% off your subscription at magicmind.co slash ASLAYER. That's magicmind.co slash ASLAYER. Before the break, we were talking about the importance of finding inspiration. And now we're going to dig into trusting the process, which again, from routine to inspiration to trusting the process, sometimes I can almost feel you rolling your eyes. But it really is a key part of healing and of moving out of overwhelm. Sometimes we can feel like we're doing all the right things but nothing is working. We might feel like we're trying everything, but we still don't feel better. And when we feel like that, we can lose hope and feel low and go into a a deeper cycle of doom, gloom, and destruction. This is where we need to trust ourselves and the process and give it time. Yeah, I always remember that quote from one of our greatest Ayurveda teachers and authors, Dr. Vasant Ladd, and he says, what's worthwhile takes a while. That's a big test with anxiety is to be patient. Sometimes we might be doing all the right things and we might feel that nothing's working. And there's a really important word to add to the end of that, which is yet. Nothing's working yet. Give it time. You know, we might start going to the gym because we want to get fit, but we know it's going to take time. You see those time-lapse videos sometimes on YouTube of somebody that's really transformed their body, and they'll show you over sometimes, you know, a year or 18 months. It's a long period of time that they've been doing that. Austerity, going to the gym and, and doing the work, and with anxiety, we have to do the work too to help ourselves feel better and have a better quality of life. So. We need to give it time. And it's always good to add that word yet. If we're learning something and we say, I don't understand it, if you add yet, don't understand it yet, then um, it just makes everything feel more possible and more, more open. So keep going. The giving it time piece I know can really be a big ask. And having been 
fairly impatient in this lifetime. All I can say about that is when I have been sweet with myself and when I have continued to put one foot in front of the other, I have been so much happier with whatever the results are. And yeah, there are days when you feel like nothing's working or what have you, but when you stick with it back to the routine, it's amazing how much you can celebrate on the other side after sticking with it. Yeah. Again, that's where journaling really helps because it helps us log the little triumphs and it helps us look back with compassion and, and we can see, okay, that was a difficult day, but I did do this and I, and I tried that. And we, we just see that little thread of, of attempts. And sometimes we're going to fall off the log and we're going to have a rough day, but it's just a day. Come back around. Tomorrow's always another day. There's always another chance. And if we can try and see the gift in that sunrise of a new day, what can I do today to help myself? And it is an uphill trudge sometimes with anxiety. It just is. But if we can find a way to keep moving forward and doing the things that will over time help. And some things help more quickly than others. If you can get on board with learning some tapping or practicing some guided relaxations, they can bring you relief in the moment. We also need those tools, particularly when we feel overwhelmed with anxiety. We have a guided tapping session on our Patreon called Tapping for When Everything's Too Much, where I just talk you through for about seven minutes how to really tap anxiety down and feel more space and more peace. We have SOS guided tapping sessions in our courses on Teachable as well at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. So there are ways where you can use audio support that you can just put it on and think, okay, in five, 10 minutes, I'm going to feel more comfortable and I'm going to feel more resourceful. It's not that we're saying it's going to take a year before you feel better. No, it's just that the long-term healing work, background work that really supports us on all levels, mentally and physically, that's just good to have that in place. And over time, that really does bear wonderful fruit. But you'll, st you'll still feel improvement over days and weeks and months as you go. The improvement's there to be, to be experienced. But there are also supportive techniques where on a really bad day where you feel like your mind is just your worst enemy and you're suffering so much, tapping, guided relaxations, guided support can bring peace in minutes. And also to know your constitution. If you are a uh, pitta mind, uh, if your dosha is more pitta like mine is, uh, you might be more of a person who likes to control outcomes uh, or make things happen. And from my experience, the more you can release that, the more you can be in a space of intention and trust, the happier you are. The more you're not pushing your agenda, uh, the less anxious and agitated you'll become. Uh, trying to manage everything and control everything and have everything come immediately is exhausting. So trust the process the best you can by setting an intention, moving in the direction of what you wish to experience, and then do your best to not be attached to the outcome. Just continue to make these supportive choices. And we have a whole list of additional ideas about how you can trust the process. So I just shared there setting an intention. That's followed by making incremental action, the tiniest change, and then celebrating each step. Asking for support is huge. Not being afraid to ask for support. Being grateful for every bit of the process, for every choice that you make that supports yourself. And again, uh, easier said than done, but do your best to remain unattached to the outcome. Loosen the reins a little bit and continue to breathe. Breathe deeply and do the best you can to trust yourself and trust the process. And then repeat. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Yeah, rinse and repeat. <laughs> 
And really, if you if you listen to these processes, they're all there in the wisdom teachings of the world. Every wisdom teaching tradition teaches us don't be attached to the outcome. Just do the best you can and be content that you're doing the best you can and let things unfold. So it also can be really helpful to look at a wisdom tradition that speaks to you that you feel drawn to and read there as well, look for inspiration there as well. And also our private Facebook group, we have members who regularly share, you know, I took a journey in the car and it's been really hard for me and I did it. Or we had somebody recently who was really struggling going to the store and they were so brave and they kept trying different ways. And then they posted last week, I went to the store and it wasn't so bad. I did it. And so many people jumped on that post to, to congratulate them. Celebrate. Yeah. And celebrate yeah. with them. So if you want some company on your journey, some understanding on your journey, it's a very kind, completely private group. Just look up Anxiety Slayer on Facebook and come hang out with us there and get some support and share where you need help. It's a safe place to ask for help and it's a safe place to share your wins and victories. Thank you so much for listening in. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Anxiety Slayer. And we do want to let you know that we are in the process of creating a brand new course for calming anxiety with Ayurveda. The course will be available at the Anxiety Slayer Academy later this year. But if you want early access to the teachings, we're releasing the new lessons as we create them to our top tier patrons. If you become a top tier patron and you can get early access to what is sure to be a popular course for anxiety relief. Visit patreon.com forward slash anxiety slayer if this offering feels light for you.